In the years following the K-pop boom, Visual K has lost a lot of fans to the movement for a variety of reasons, one of the most commonly cited being the lack of creativity from current VK bands. Some of those left in the fandom have made the same observations and have begun to dig a little deeper to find new talent, past the usual metalcore or shade bands, unearthing some truly unique talent. Some of them have even begun to branch outside of the VK realm to bands that aren't necessarily associated with VK, but definitely have a visual flair to them. One of these bands beginning to make headway is Liv Moon. Formed in 2009, Liv Moon is a goth metal band fronted by the powerful, operatic voice of Liv Akane. They have gone largely unnoticed by the American fanbase until 2012 with the release of their third album, Symphonic Moon. With similarities more akin to European bands such as Leaves Eyes and The Lane than fellow Japanese bands, Liv Moon began to carve a unique identity for themselves with their gothic overtones, exceptional guitar work, rich atmosphere, and stunning vocals. However, with the release of their newest album, The End of the Beginning, they have changed their formula quite a bit, stripping themselves of their more gothic elements in favor of a more symphonic approach. This is likely to scare away a lot of their newly acquired fans as changes usually spell doom in the Visual K scene. However, this is a Visual K, and simply put, The End of the Beginning is one of the greatest J-Rock releases in the last 10 years. Right out of the gate, the beginning of the end enriches you with its new symphonic direction with the angelic melody of its prologue track before becoming almost immediately dramatic and frantic at the onset of the album's first full song, Free Your Soul. A frenzy of guitars, double bass pedals, strings, horns, and choirs envelop the listener as they are instantly brought into Live Moon's new world. continues along with this dramatic feel while somehow allowing each and every song on the album to carry a unique identity. The very next track, Fountain of My Pleasure, has a bit of a Middle Eastern touch to it. Immortals has a very Celtic feel to its opening and chorus, Midsummer's Eve cracks you over the head with a righteous keyboard solo, and Black Fairy has a cinematic bravado to its larger than life chorus. The whole album just oozes with creativity and craftsmanship that the American J-Rock fanbase hasn't taken notice of in years. Liv Moon's albums in the past have relied heavily on the technical guitar work of Takayoshi Omura and the stunning vocals of Liv Akane. The beginning of the end is no exception. While the star of the show is very much Akane, the album lets Omura have a full song in the spotlight with the atmospheric instrumental Valhalla. The album's lead single is the ballad And Forevermore. The song is a duet with a male singer and their voices actually match up really well. But Akane is center stage in this song, nearly completely muscling out his voice with the power of her own. Oh, and the male vocalist is Key Marcello of Europe. Yeah, that Europe. Which might explain why the chorus sounds so much like Girl From Lebanon. We can't hide our love. The album sounds less like the bands that they were compared to in the past, such as Theater of Tragedy, and more like Within Temptation or Nightwish. While Liv Moon doesn't have the advantage of working with the London Philharmonic, they do make the most of working with synthesized orchestras. For the most part. The orchestrations are at their best in Free Your Soul and Black Fairy, where they can be near indistinguishable from the real thing, especially when mixed with the real life choirs. However, there are a few times where the orchestration samples are less than stellar. This is the album's only real
real Achilles heel, the album's title track. The poor horn samples that seem to emulate Mazorski's Night on Bald Mountain fail to set that thick atmosphere that other tracks on the album do. As the song reaches its peak, it's broken by a children's choir, which gives you a slightly peaceful moment before you realize what a chaotic mess this song is. However bad this track may be, though, it is likely the only skippable track in an otherwise stellar album. I can't recommend this album enough. For fans of Montero Opera or people trying to fill that void left behind by Versailles, this album is near perfect, offering some of the familiar symphonic elements of those bands, but bringing a European ideal to it, keeping it fresh to the ears of the American J-Rock fanbase. While not perfect, its faults can be easily overlooked as the listener is brought into one of the most rich, creative worlds experienced in a long time from a Japanese band. Tanya Reality gives Liv Moves the end of the beginning a 9 out of 10.